there fellow hot travelers, Mark here with Walters World and today we're in Athens, Greece and we're here during a heat wave. We're talking 41, 42, 43 Celsius. We're talking 104, 105 degrees while we've been here in Greece and it can be oppressively hot when you are here. And what I want to do is give you some advice of how to beat the heat while you travel, especially when you're coming to Europe or going to the US in July and August when you can have seriously high temperatures. So these are just some things we do to avoid the heat, but also things that you can use to help keep yourself safe because this is one of the most dangerous parts of traveling in the summertime is the dehydration, is the sun, and so you gotta be careful with that. And I think a lot of it starts when you're starting to pack for your trip to Greece, to Italy, to wherever you're gonna go, and that comes down to your clothes, okay? You don't wanna wear synthetic clothes. You wanna stick to natural fibers. Why? The synthetic fabrics don't breathe, so it's harder to kind of get your clothes to dry out, to get that sweat off of you, to let it breathe, and so you can be cooler when a nice breeze comes through. Also with your clothing, you don't want to wear dark clothes. Keep it to the light colors because the dark colors you have, the, the blacks, the blues, those kind of things, the darker blues, they kind of suck in that heat, they suck in that sun and make you even more hot. So be aware of that. And also when you're packing your clothes, you might want to stay away from tight clothing because the tight clothing just makes you more hot. A little bit looser clothing really can make a difference when a breeze goes through to make you feel better. So that's kind of a clothing thing I'd like to say. And of course, you know, you want to have a hat. You'll be surprised how much having a hat with the sun beating down on you can actually help you cool off and also keep you protected from the sun, especially if you're um, follically challenged like myself, it can really help. And part of that being overheated, some of it has to do just with, with the sunburn you can get. So having good sunblock, reapplying that, because if you get sunburned, you're gonna feel hotter all the time and your clothes are really not gonna feel comfortable. So that's another thing to kind of think about when you're packing your gear to come on your trip. And, and I think when you're going around as a traveler, one thing I see people make a mistake of is they cheap out and don't buy water. Look, if you're going around and you're traveling in this heat, you wanna buy water. Here in Greece, they know it gets hot. They actually have a law that says those little bottles of water have to be 50 cents. So you can keep plowing that water in. You need to do that because it helps your body regulate and keep you cool. And how many times have you been so hot, you're like, I'm just gonna pour a little water on my head. I mean, sometimes it's silly things like that, but it can make a difference because I know when we travel with our kids when it was really hot, there's been a number of times we just poured some cold water on them. And they're like, oh, thank God that helped a little bit. <laughs> Now these are all kind of basic things and I want to get into some more like really travel tips to help you see sites better in the heat. Number one, go see the outdoor sites in the morning. I'm here outside the Acropolis. The line formed at 7 a.m. because people want to get up there on the Acropolis, see the Parthenon when it's early because the temperatures are cooler and you can kind of enjoy a slightly less hot morning to see those outdoor sites. So that's one of the big things there. Or what you want to do if there's outdoor things, maybe you wait until the evening time to see the outdoor sites like here in Athens. I mean, you can enjoy the outside of the Parthenon in the evening, but walking around, seeing some of the temples and ruins, you can do that in the evening time as well. So that's kind of nice, okay? Now, going along with that, what I would recommend, if you know it's gonna be hot, I mean, you're gonna look at the 10 day forecast before you travel, always do that. If you know it's gonna be hot during the day, maybe from that two to four time or that two to five time, my next advice is to go see the museums then. Because the museums, they're gonna be climate controlled because they wanna make sure that Mask of Agamemnon is okay and the, and, the, and the Louvre, you know, in the Louvre, they wanna make sure the paintings don't go bad, right, with, with bad air. So it's temperature controlled and so therefore it's a much more enjoyable climate to walk around inside museums in the afternoon to get out of the heat. Another thing I would recommend, if you're in a place like Italy, Spain, Greece, realize that some of those places, the afternoons, are kind of like a siesta time, a relaxing time. People want to get out of the heat there too, and then the stores might close in the afternoon. Use that to your advantage. Head back to your hotel, head back to your apartment, get a little nap in, get out of that heat, and so you can kind of readjust and, and kind of cool off and maybe dry out your clothes, you know, if, they, if you're sweated through. And that kind of goes into my next tip for beating the heat, and it goes into reading the reviews of the hotels or apartments or rentals you're gonna stay at. Make sure they have air conditioning, but also read the reviews, like search and reviews for air conditioning. Because ones that do not have good air conditioning, people who put a review saying the air conditioner didn't work, air conditioner problems, doesn't get cool enough, these things will at least let you know that, okay, it has AC, but it might not be working so well. Or if they said, oh, a very comfortable stay, and you see that they stayed in July, you're like, okay, I'm thinking they have something going on there where they have a good job of kind of managing the heat. Now, going back to that topic of doing evening activities or afternoon activities, honestly, look for evening activities that could be an outside event. Like, 
here you go to the Odeon and we actually saw Gilberto Gil, Gilles, a Brazilian singer at the evening concert here. It started at 9 o'clock at night, went through 11 and it was really nice because that's when it would cool it off. And so look for outdoor events because places that do get really hot, they know it gets really hot and they'll adjust their kind of entertainment for travelers and locals to that. So take advantage of it by looking up and kind of doing your research on what's going on so you can enjoy it. And speaking of enjoy it, um, Liam's uh, advice to you all is to eat ice cream whenever you can because honestly, having that cold ice cream really helps. And what I've seen in some of the ice cream places, they want to make sure they keep the ice cream cold too. So when you walk in to order, you'll notice they have their AC kicking. Like, so you're like, oh, I'm going to stand over here and eat my ice cream so it doesn't melt while I'm eating it, right? So that can give you a chance. And, and that's another thing. If you're getting overheated, don't don't pass up a shop. Go in a shop that'll have air conditioning and go cool off. You don't have to buy anything. Just walk around and peruse and take in that AC to really help you cool down. Now, another unfortunate tip I have for you is you might want to lay off the liquor during the day because when you're drinking the liquor, boo, I know, Mark, say it's not true, but honestly, the liquor can dehydrate you. So maybe save the drinking for the evening and maybe not doing the day drinking when you're in a hot destination because that can dehydrate you even more. Or at least if you are going to drink, get a water with every drink you get to kind of keep yourself hydrated. Now a technology invention that can help you stay cool is one of those handheld battery operated fans. You'll see people walk around with a little fan just blowing on them. That little bit of air movement can really help out. And even if you're in a hotel that doesn't have AC, that little you know, handheld fan can help it actually in your room if you prop it up near your bed just to get a little bit of air movement going to make you feel better. But sometimes I realize you can't get out of the heat. You can't get out of coming to places in July and August. That's when the kids get off of school. And so another small thing I recommend is seek out the shade. When you're walking down the streets, you're going through the pedestrian zones, don't walk in the middle of the sunny part, walk over on the shaded part because that literally, I mean, we're talking 10, 15 degrees cooler sometimes when you're walking in the shade and that little bit can make a big difference, especially if you start to overheat. And, and that's why I wanna say, if you are overheating, stop. Go into a store and cool off. Sit down, go to a cafe and have some water, have something to rehydrate yourself so you can kind of get back into it before you start hiking out again and start going again because it can be dangerous because up here at the Parthenon they've been having all these tourists in the heat literally passing out because of dehydration because they're just so worn out from the heat so you want to be careful and take a break sometimes. Now another food tip I'd have for you when it comes to like eating when it's hot I would say this, don't have your big meal at lunch because if you have that big meal, realize the water goes there to help digestion, the blood's flowing there, you're, you're working more so your core temperature goes up. So it actually makes you hotter if you're digesting more food. So stick to lighter meals, maybe a sandwich or salads at lunchtime to help you stay cool and then have your big meal in the evening time when, you're, when it's not as hot. So you don't mind if your body heats up a little bit because let me tell you, meat sweats in Greece when it's 105 outside, not fun. And then of course there's the most obvious way to beat the heat when you travel. Don't travel in July and August in Europe or the US because those are the hottest months. Look at the weather forecast. When's the best time to come? Now I realize if you have a family and kids they go to school, July and August are your only times. But if your kids are little or they're out of the house or you're on your own, you're a solo traveler, maybe to get the kind of summer nice weather experience without the super heat, go traveling in May, June, September. That can help out as well, okay? So I want to give a special thank you to Barbara from Florida who reached out and asked Walter's World, how do I beat the heat when I'm traveling in the summer in Europe. Barb, I hope this helps you out a little bit. I hope you and your daughter Megan are having a great time in Italy and when you travel and I'm hoping you're beating the heat. Also, for all of you that have questions about travel, please put it down in the comment section below because sometimes we find those questions and we make videos to help out other travelers. So please let us know your questions down below. We'll try to answer them and also maybe make a video for it. So thanks Barb, Megan and all you fellow travelers. Have a great time and stay cool when you're traveling in the summer or the winter depending where you're going to go when it comes to the heat. Bye from here in Athens, Greece.